Yeah, hi Pradeep. Uh, can you briefly explain about your profile and your work experience? Yeah, hi. Hi, Ashok. Like, uh, uh, myself, Pradeep Kumar Bekna. Like, I have nearly six years of experience uh, working on data stage VTL. Okay. Like, previous. Okay. Uh, like, I have worked with uh, banking and insurance clients, uh, like on data migration projects and then few of the enhancement projects as well. And uh, I have some experience on data profiling using the information analysis. Okay. Okay. So, on which version of data stage you worked on? Like, uh, most of the time I worked on 8.5. Uh, okay. Okay. So, do you have any experience in server jobs? Uh, like, server jobs, I have an idea, but I did not use them like, in my projects. Okay. Mm. So, can you explain me the list of stages you worked on? Yeah, like uh, community stages, like uh, I have used the five stages like information file and data set, and then community processing stages. I have worked with aggregator, transformer, change object, change apply, mode duplicate, sort. And most of the processing stages we have used. Okay. And coming to the real time stages, I have worked with the XML uh, stages, XML input and output. <coughs> okay. Okay. So. And then. Okay. Database stages we have worked with the uh, Okay. So in your development environment, uh, in your configurational file, uh, how many nodes you used? Like in development environment, we have used the two node configuration file. Okay. Mm, how about C10 UAT environments? Coming to environment, we uh, have used the four node, and coming to UAT, also we have used the four node. Okay. So, how do you, you used to import your jobs and export your jobs to different environments? Uh, like, uh, we used to import, uh, export the DS jobs using the export uh, utility in the data space. Okay. Then uh, means like in the branding project previously I have worked, we used to use the star uh, tool to maintain the working and for the checking and security of the jobs to different environments. Okay. Mm, okay. So, do you have any idea of version control mechanism? Like how do you did the version controlling? Yeah, like uh, for version controlling, like uh, first uh, we will be taking out the uh, jobs from the first we will be taking a, a DSX from the data stage and then we will be checking them into the uh, version control tool. Okay. So then we need to check, check them out into the new server. Like uh, it will be done through the admin team, not by us. Like we will just provide them the DSX. Okay. So which version control tool you used? Uh, like it's the star team. So coming to the very recent project where you worked for your work at one of the consulting company, uh, can you explain me the, the project architecture or uh, the architecture in which the data flows? Yeah, like recently we have worked with one detail client, uh, there uh, our scope is to build the customer data warehouse. Okay. So there, uh, we have concentrated on the data model like uh, first we have validated all the source files and then based on them we have built the data model like uh, coming to the size and dimension tables. Uh, we have the dimension tables like uh, customer table and then product store survey uh, to dimension tables and then coming to chart tables we are maintaining like uh, sales related and then uh, most of the sales, sales related uh, we have that. Okay. Uh, so, coming to the order in which the facts and dimension loads, uh, in which order you load the set of tables which you have? Yeah, like first we will be loading the dimension tables and then the facts will be the aggregation phase one to dimension Okay. Uh, can you be more audible? Uh, 
some disturbance okay so, okay so suppose like uh, there is a record in fact uh, which doesn't have a proper data in dimensions although you have the key entry for the fact it doesn't have a complete information uh, on a th second or third day you are going to get the complete information so how you are going to handle this early arriving fact so that it gets complete information whenever the information is uh, came in dimension tables so you are telling like there is no primary key for the uh, fact the dimension tables but there is no some fact uh, related information suppose like we have uh, an account information uh, we have an account id which is generated mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't have the customer information and other set of information okay. I uh, want to say like first we will be capturing those records which don't have the primary key in the next table into a object file. Yeah. So then in the later time of load uh, we need to combine these records uh, along with the new source in the next day. So how we are going to do this? Uh, like uh, we will be sending the reject file to the source team so okay. that they can ask for the new source file again. Okay. Uh, what's the volume of data used to get in the incremental loads? Incremental loads like the initial load we will be having a huge amount of data. So we need to load like historical uh, data. So then the later loads we will be having only few of the records as it is an incremental load. Okay. Uh, so how do you rate yourself in data stage in a scale of 10? Can read it on like eight. Eight. Okay. Okay. Well, what is the significance of runtime column propagation? Like, uh, by in a job, whether which is applied with an RCP or without RCP, uh, which will be more advantage, like using RCP or not, and if yes, why so? Yeah, like if uh, most of the columns, like uh, they are repeating in all the stages, then it's better to go with the RCP. Because uh, it is like a uh, inline, um, uh, like uh, migration of the columns from one stage to the other, like uh, without involvement of the Can it be more audible? Yeah. Okay, can you repeat it? Yeah, like RCP coming to uh, RCP, using RCP in the job is more uh, advantageous because uh, there is no need for explicit duplication of columns in all the stages. So, so let me give you a scenario. Uh, I have a source table called uh, uh, daily account, and I have a target table called uh, max account. Okay, it's a daily account and max account. Uh, there are some 30 fields in source and target, out of which few were having few set of transformations. Mm -hmm. You are having few set of transformations. Okay. So on the next day, I got a scenario. I used to get few columns added day by day in the source and target. Okay, I used to get few columns added in source and target. Without disturbing the job, I should uh, design the job in such a way that if there are any stride pushes from source to target by adding new columns, we need not touch the job, and job should handle it. So the question is simple. You have a job. Uh, a simple job with source and target having two set of columns. If you have any column added as a strike push from source to target with the same column name, then the job should handle by itself. Yeah, like uh, then while selecting the columns from the uh, source string, then we will be using the select star. No? So there uh, we need to use the RCP. Yeah. So that uh, the columns which we declared in the panel. Only those will be there, and along with it, the new columns which are added also will be migrated. Okay. Uh, so, what are the different set of documentation involved in your project? I mean, to documentation like we will be documenting the source to target mapping, which are uh, described the transformations in the source columns, so okay. they will be loaded into the Then, there will be a technical design document. Uh, which outlines the uh, ETL design of the jobs. Okay. Uh, 
then after the testing phase uh, we will have a unit test uh, document uh, which outlines the uh, test cases to teach and every scenario for a particular uh, develop job so how do you have any scheduling to schedule yeah. to the wsr autosys so yeah, like that. Mm, so if you have uh, the sequences i mean the job sequences sequence of jobs or uh, and we have scheduling capability as well in data stage so what is the necessity to have the third party scheduling tool like uh, the sequential jobs scheduling wise uh, it will uh, uh so you have mainly used to determine the flow of job mm, so that uh, it can be uh let us come into the third party tools we can uh, schedule the jobs based on the external uh, servers as well like for example if there are dependency between the two uh, jobs on a different servers okay. then we can establish the relationship between them as well okay cool okay suppose like if i have a mechanism like you are getting a set of file and you are loading the data into a target table okay so okay. this is a normal scenario that we face so usually we used to get a file for some something around like uh, 750 pm and we used to schedule the jobs by 8 pm and the uh, the job used to pick the file suppose like on a day we were receive the history file of a huge amount of data where the the process of sftp or ftp is uh, going on for uh, a few minutes like 15 to 20 minutes by which uh, your native job gets triggered so the file the input file will not be downloaded completely into the server and then and even then the job gets triggered which picks only only few records so how we are going to find so i'm looking at your profile so you have wide experience in working in xml stages as well right okay uh so it's like um can you explain me a scenario which you thought like it's the complex scenario where you handled in your project and brought a uh, good scope and uh, improved the performance kind of thing uh, can you explain me a scenario where you have wide experience uh, used uh, and you used that wide experience in designing the solution and optimizing the solution yeah, like uh, my really uh, target xml uh, given the migration <coughs> in a project uh, like uh, it's the most complex scenario of the world okay mm, because it involves like nearly 150 to 200 elements uh, which we need to uh, arrange in a hierarchical manner in a target panel okay. that is the uh, desired format okay here the problem we faced is here like uh, for for generating a particular uh, xml for each frame like uh, when we image join all the tables like we are getting here the uh, 2000 of uh, rows for each of the frame so again we need to uh, plug all the all of them into single frame so here the main issue is the like uh, while running the job for the two number of frames like hundred or fifty frames okay the buffer space is getting filled uh, due to this uh, Jungle multiple tables for each of them. Okay. So later on we could issue by using all the elements and then generating the XML. So this is the most complex one that we have actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in a normal scenario where you face uh, this question, like uh, in a given scenario. what makes you think to go with a look up or to go with a join like uh, look up and join like uh, mm, i think it will be a like different scenario because look up mainly we need to use just for the uh, two reference uh, values we need to range look up or some uh, code values we need to do so a look up then we need to go for the look up whereas coming to join it will be like uh, joining two different data sets Based on the pattern, like huge number of data on both the uh, reference links and the main links. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so I was explaining you a little bit about a scenario where uh, you are not getting any trigger file kind of thing, but you are getting a data file, and you have scheduled the job in a ten minute scope once you receive the file. So. 
the day which you, where you receive the history file which was loading for minutes this job gets triggered in uh, in the middle of the process so in order to avoid that scenario if the trigger file mechanism is not having is not implemented in your project uh, from the source side so how you are going to handle this so then we need to force wait the job until the history load is done so uh, uh, no 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 my question is uh, suppose like it's a 2 gb file and it was downloaded till 500 mb okay and uh, in the meanwhile it's getting downloaded like for every second or every minute the size gets increased due to the downloaded content uh, but your uh, data set jobs gets triggered by 8 pm so if you want to set another set of dependency to handle this scenario what you're going to do then we can we need to check on the file size uh, if it is uh okay yeah no problem so it gets changed in a span of 30 seconds until, uh, yeah like if it is getting changed repeatedly then we need to wait until the size remains uh, constant for a particular period of time okay go with the scenarios with uh, data space so suppose like if you have a particular column uh, contact okay okay so in the contact uh, let's assume the data is like home uh, you have an is to symbol followed by the home phone number and and then followed by a semicolon and then you you have and you have uh, mobile followed by is to and a mobile number and uh, you have um, one more semicolon and you have car um, business uh, followed by is to and followed by business phone number so in a single column you are getting the home phone uh, then a uh, semicolon delimiter then a business phone semicolon delimiter and a mobile phone so if you if i have uh, three set of contacts my record needs to be split into two suppose if you have only home phone number and business phone number my record needs to be split into two if i own if i have only one phone number my one one record should go as it is to so getting the scenario right based on a single column based on the values the record needs to be split into multiple records so how you are going to do is in data stage like we can use the pivot stage no like based on the key column and the delimiter of any column we can put in the record uh so is the the number of records that are splitted in pivot or constant or can be varied it can vary based on the uh, delimiter like if the delimiter we have fixed like three delimiters then we will be getting three records with the uh, the contact as blank okay but if it is only one semicolon and two values then we will be getting two records so are you going uh, how you are going to do this in transformer yeah, yeah like in transformer uh, by using the staging variable we can do this so how like uh, first we will be sorting the values based on the uh, employee number or name which is the uh, key field <coughs> then we will be taking the key change uh, value so here in staging variable so the key remains uh, same okay are you sure you may manage like i think we want so one record is splitting into multiple records is the delimiter uh, constant or it is going to vary like if there are only two records two uh, values then it is only one single delimiter no yeah yeah if you have two values we have one single delimiter so the number of repetitions so i'm giving a hint here the number of repetitions so, like we need like three records or only in one record three values like three different contacts so in input you are getting in one record three values it needs to be split into three records okay so then uh, 
Yes, we, we need to use the field function like first we will be picking first value. Okay. First we will count the number of delimiters. Okay. So then based on delimiters, what we need to do is uh, we need to form three different columns for three contacts. Okay. Okay. So, <coughs> here, so based on the count and field function, first we will split them into three different uh, stage variables. Okay. So then we need to take three different output links. One we will be matching for one of the contact and the different uh, there are only two contacts and we will be mapping only for the over the column and using the final stage we will funnel these three links. Uh, do we need a funnel? It's not required, right? Uh, based on the iteration variable itself it will be generating three, right? Uh, like a question where is line not the okay. Okay. Uh, okay we can do it the pivot as well for no issues okay so have you implemented any error mechanism in your current project yeah, yeah like uh, yeah. you have done no? okay so what kind of error codes you are going to capture like what are the scenarios of error codes uh, you're going to capture. Yeah, like uh, mostly uh, yeah. here error handling yeah. we have done is like uh, yeah. regarding the reject yeah. uh, type. Okay. okay. So yeah. the rejects yeah. are based on a uh, few of the yeah. criteria yeah. that have assigned uh, the yeah. error yeah. codes for them and yeah. before rejecting to the file. Okay. So yeah. they are like they are not meeting the some of the criteria. Yeah. We will be adding yeah. them. Uh, then in the separate tab, we will be reading this error file and loading them to the error uh, table. Okay. Okay. Mm, okay. So, do you have any experience in writing the routines? Like, uh, I have not written any routines, but I have used them like in my jobs. Okay. For so, capturing the audit uh, steps. Uh, suppose you have a scenario like to go with the joins in a database or joins in data stage, which one you do and which one you prefer? Uh, I prefer like joins in database. Joins in database. Are you sure? Joins in data stage. You're going with joins in data stage. So how yeah. is going to improve the performance? Uh, like because uh, the resources Coming to the uh, DB, it will be limited with memory uh, while joining. So it will be slow. We have coming to the data stage. Uh, here we will be reading, first reading the data. Hello? Into the server. Okay. okay. Uh, and then we will. Okay. Yeah. So what is the significance of sparse lookup? Like the sparse lookup, we will use uh, while the reference of the. Uh, Data the DB database, okay. Because uh, here from the database, if you want to pull more number of uh, records, uh, then our temporary or uh, storage uh, for the lookup will be get filled. So we will be doing this fast lookup in case of uh, reference to the database. Okay. Uh, so if you have the functionality or resources more in data stage based, the performance gets increased while doing a join. Then why we need to go with a sparse lookup? We can go with a normal lookup, right? Yeah, coming to the lookup wise, uh, what it does is like uh, the reference data, it will first take to the RAM, like a temporary memory. So if the lookup data is huge, then the temporary memory gets filled up and the performance will be uh, decreased. Yeah, we may need to rethink on this, like. Uh, uh, which scenario we will be choosing okay and second thing is um, uh, what is the difference between like SMP and MVP systems like SMP is like a symmetric uh, multiprocessing here uh, <coughs> the same disk and the same uh, temporary uh, storage memory will be used across all the CPUs like the processing node okay. 
they have coming to the MPP. Like now, we will start processing here. Uh, Dependent machines uh, use their own memory, their own memory space, in the operating system. Coming to the units part, like uh, so, suppose in a sequential file, uh, you are going to use a sequential file and data storage. And if you want to remove the headers and trailer record and wanna load into the target, like how you are going to handle this in data storage? Yeah, yeah like uh, in a sequential file, so under general tab, we will go to the, uh, we will check the box like. Uh, Filter the data, uh, filter data, filter command. Okay. So then uh, filter command uh, box will be enabled. Okay. So there we can, uh, for uh, so the header and trailer request, we can write the units command to both of them. So what is that command? Do you have any idea? Yeah, yeah like it's, so we can use like arc 1D. Then we call it dollar B, which means like uh, to delete the first row and as well as the last row. Okay. So coming to the current role uh, where your profile is being considered for bank issue technologies is for one of the investment banking client where we are widely looking for the people who are having experience in data storage in both designing and development and more kind of performance tuning as well. And uh, we are expecting some experience in XML as well where you have enough experience in XML as you put it in your CV and uh, how good you are with the uh, SQL skills? Yeah, yeah SQL like uh, I have worked with the in my life with experience on that as well. Okay. So are you able to write the basic queries of joints kind of things? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what is the difference between a delete and truncate? Hello. Delete function in a table. Yeah. Like uh, uh, delete function can use it to delete a particular set of row from a table, and whereas truncate deletes the entire record from a table. Okay. Any more difference? Okay. That is a major difference, I think. That's it. Okay. Mm, so, if a primary index is not defined on a particular uh, set of rows, columns, or set of columns in a table, uh, mm -hmm. how it going to impact the performance? If uh, the query performance will be decreased because it could. Uh, Directly go to each and every record to check on the key, but if indexes are there, directly first to check on the index and it will select the uh, records which matches for that index and it will pull those uh, only those rows. So, so you are going, like going to have a full scan without indexes? Yeah, yeah. without indexes, it is going to find the full data. Okay. So, it looks like. Uh, so how do you implement SCD2 in using data stage? Yeah, like uh, SCD2 we can implement using the change capture and change apply. Okay. Or like uh, SCD2 we can do it simply uh, uh, using like update uh, the method. Like we are going to update the existing old record with the any constant and the current indicator is no. And then we will be setting the new record with the current indicator as well. So, which schema you are using in your uh, data warehousing system? Is it star or snowflake? Uh, like uh, star, star schema we have used. Okay. Well, I'm done with my interview. Uh, when you may need to walk up to the office uh, to view the face to face interview for the second round. Okay. Uh, I will be mailing you the details. Okay. okay. Uh, do you have any questions? Yeah, yeah nothing.